there were moments in this book that, that were um, challenging, some that were uh, thrilling, some that were terrifying. Um, and you like to, uh, what's obvious you're a scientist, because you like to perform little experiments uh, that we can mm. do in the book as we're going along. Yeah, thrilling, challenging, and terrifying. I'll buy that review any day of the week, Craig. That's exactly what um, I, I wanted the book to be. I wanted the book to not just educate people. I also wanted it to entertain people. Um, and so I, a lot of the time, lead with a story first um, and then you know, build the science around that story. But it's also a book that people can uh, learn from. It's a book that you, know, you can read to become a better persuader. Um, not everybody is going to be a black belt in influence. Not everyone's going to be an elite persuader. It's exactly the same as um, you know, saying not everyone can run uh, the 100 meters in under 10 seconds. Not everyone's going to show out uh, in the Olympics for Canada. Um, in the same way, persuasion is a talent like any other. Not everyone is going to be an elite persuader. But you can improve your time. You can become better than you are. And you can certainly do that by reading the book, and you can have a lot of fun on the way. Uh, the creepy people, and you deal with them near the end of the book, are, are the, um, the ones who know how to push all those buttons. Yeah. But they don't care. That's right. Absolutely. To them, it, it is literally just the same as seeing a button on a, on a desk w of, of a control panel and just well, click it. You know what, Craig? You're absolutely right. You know, there's a great quote from Homer Simpson. He says, just because I don't get it doesn't mean I don't care. Right? And that quote is pretty typical of the kind of people who you're talking about, namely psychopaths. And in fact, you very nearly took the words out of my mouth there because one of the psychopaths who I interviewed um, actually put it pretty much in those words. He said that actually the brain is like a computer. And he said, all you need to do is know the function keys. You just need to know what buttons to press and what's going to happen on the screen. He said, if you know that, you don't need to know anything else. Um, one of the things about psychopaths, it's, it, it, it's, it's uh, one of the anomalies, is it's, been, you know, it's widely thought that they lack empathy. Uh, and that's true to a certain degree. Um, but there's two kinds of empathy. There's a hot empathy and a cold empathy. A hot empathy is a kind of empathy where you feel another's pain. You feel what they're going through. But a cold empathy is the ability to coolly and dispassionately gauge what someone should or might be feeling. And psychopaths are very good at that cold empathy. They're very good at picking up on what you might feel or should feel in a certain situation. They know the words, but not the music, of emotions. And that makes them very dangerous. Because what that allows them to do, it allows them to weigh up situations without getting involved in the heat and light of the situation itself. One of the con artists who I interviewed put it very succinctly, he said, never allow yourself to become emotionally involved in an outcome. It's very chilling. If you have the ability to do, it, do that, it's very beneficial to persuade as if it means nothing when it means everything. Because it enables you to very coolly and dispassionately stand back from the situation. And a lot of errors are made when we get caught up in the emotions of things. The human brain is this amazing device. It can be short-circuited disturbingly easily. The brain, undoubtedly, is the most complex system in the known universe. Uh, but there are times when the world's most sophisticated computer can turn right before, or should I say right behind your very eyes, into the world's most complex whoopee cushion. <laughs> and that really can occur um, without any notice at all. I mean, it's often the very simple things that make the biggest differences. One of the examples I give is, imagine that I was uh, your boss, and imagine that I wanted you to stay behind and put in another two hours to get a presentation ready uh, by nine o'clock the next morning, beyond the call of duty. If I said to you, Craig, uh, any chance you could stay behind and put in another couple of hours um, to get the presentation ready, um, my chances might be 50-50. 
But imagine, let's say, that I knew that you were into marathon running, you're an endurance athlete, you'd run the Boston Marathon, the Toronto Marathon, you were very keen on it. Knowing that, if I then rephrase what I was saying to come out as, Craig, you know, any chance that you've got the stamina to put in another couple of hours? We're really at the wall. We're hitting the wall with this that's one. That's right. We're yeah. hitting the wall with this one, that kind of thing. I would greatly increase my chances of getting it done because what I'm doing is I'm short-circuiting your brain. I'm tapping into something that's obviously very important to your self-concept and you like to think of yourself in those terms. So you're more likely to do it. Now, of course, one of the things that people can get out of reading this book is not only can they become better persuaders, Craig, but they can also kind of inoculate themselves against people doing it to them, okay? So I don't want to create some kind of persuasion war out there, but these kind of simple things can sometimes stop us um, being taken for granted. You know, if you know what someone's up to, then you can kind of block that. Um, so the book is also about you know, preparing yourself to withstand persuasion um, as well as learning the tricks and techniques of social influence yourself. The book is Split Second Persuasion, The Ancient Art and New Science of Changing Minds. I've been speaking with the author Kevin Dutton and Split Second Persuasion is published by Doubleday Canada.